So, more of the story here, kids. Don't try to harm the protesters or you will get pulled over by a cop. Hello and welcome back to the channel. A few weeks ago, or a little over a week ago, I went to my first protest and that was kind of frightening. But before I get into that, if you have not yet subscribed, please do so and also click the notification bell after you are done so you are notified when I upload. Also, if my work has ever helped you out, consider being a pledge on Patreon where you will get exclusive content for as little as a dollar a month. So, Life's for Liberty came around. It was really going around on my Facebook page and I got very intrigued by it. I have never been to a protest before, to my knowledge. <laughs> if I have, it was a very, very long time ago and I simply don't remember. But this was like my first big girl uh, protest and part of me was really wanting to go. I have been wanting to, you know, just do a little more in terms of helping out and, you know, doing things that I believe in and whatnot. You know, I do believe that online activism is very much needed and is also in ways more accessible to say, you know, disabled people because physical protests are not exactly the most accessible for various reasons and that's really what I want to talk about. So a couple of things that have me concerned was one, it was in the busiest area in this area and so I was concerned, you know, is there going to be a place to sit? How are we gonna get to where we need to go? Cause traffic and things like that. Would it be wheelchair accessible, cane accessible? Again, somewhere to sit cause I have chronic pain. I can't stand around for a really long time or walk around for a really long time. And my cane is not one where I can sit on it. I know there are some around and I've been tempted to buy one. I was also asking about ASL interpreters because you're not gonna have captions on things like this. There's no way to hook it up, but and interpreters are important. Oh, so many protests, so many protests do not have interpreters. It's mind boggling to me. So I was asking about that and they said that they were actually trying to find ASL interpreters, but they weren't having much luck. And they were asking me if I possibly knew anybody. And I said, well, you know, contact these people. Uh, the North Carolina School for the Deaf will probably have some connections and you might be able to find uh, one of their interpreters and they were really excited to get that news and they were also looking for Spanish interpreters and at the end of the day when it got closer to the event and all the real nitty gritty completely confirmed details were going on they weren't able to get an ASL interpreter and they weren't able to get Spanish interpreters either so and as far as accessibility for wheelchair users and any chronic pain mobility aid users went, you were going to need to get help to get your wheelchair up because there was no real ramp anywhere. But you could sit on the grass if you wanted. There were trees with a little hill that you could sit on if you wanted. And if you really need to sit down, you're going to have to bring your own fold-out chair. Okay, cool. I think that's pretty normal, but... So the downside was I was going in there alone. I did ask a few friends who said they were interested in, in the event if they were going, but they weren't able to go because kids or they were out of town. So that was a bit of a bummer. And I went in there feeling awkward. And what do I do when I'm gonna go to these kinds of events that's likely going to be very hearing centric? I put on my deaf and loud shirt made by Sean Forbes. I'll put a link down below. It's a fantastic shirt if you're going out in public and you don't wanna go through the whole I'm deaf spiel when they're trying to talk to you. It's already on their shirt and hopefully they'll read it. It's in really big letters, you know? If somebody wanted to talk to me, I'm here for it, but it was just easier to let them know before they would try to talk to me that you're probably gonna have to put some work in one way or another. But my god was it so lonely like people just walking around or standing around and I was afraid that if I was gonna stand with them they were gonna try talking to me and then it would be like this really awkward thing so I was just kind of sitting by myself uh, near the back with the trees and you know there were people talking on the megaphones and things like that and I had no idea what was being said it was just a bunch of mumbling garble you know like they're eating the mic and it's just you can't understand what's going on so that was really lonely for the first hour it was really good to see what was going on but man was it lonely until a woman came up to me and she goes are you deaf and she signed it and I was like yeah it's on my shirt yeah I'm deaf and then she just 
started signing away and I was like, what the heck? And as it turns out, her husband is deaf and she worked at the North Carolina School for the Deaf for a few years, five years, I think. So she was pretty fluent. And so I got to talk to her for the remainder of the time. I have no idea where she is now and we haven't spoken since, but it was really cool. And also she would interpret what the speakers were saying and things like that. She wasn't an interpreter by any means and she was and she was telling me she's like I'm, I'm so sorry I'm probably not doing this well I'm not an interpreter and I said it's fine don't worry about it she's trying to interpret the songs and interpreting songs is way different and more complicated than interpreting plain English because with songs everything's more metaphorical so you kind of have to uh, like change the meaning in terms of when it comes to songs and things like that. It's very complicated. But yeah, it was cool to get a little bit of access uh, when we were all kind of huddled because the first part was the standing around with signs and protesting and things like that. And then uh, songs were being sang, sung, and you know, speakers and things like that. So I didn't have to like stand there and be like, what's going on? I would have, I was going to, but it was just nice to have somebody who could help me out a little bit. Now, I was scared about going to this protest at first and I was kind of thinking, do I want to go? Because as a disabled person, there could be injuries that were worse because the event was made really, really public. The newspaper wrote about it and people were leaving not so great comments. There were supportive comments and then there were comments with threats. <laughs> And people in the comments of the event itself were getting very concerned. And they were like, uh, so how's the cop presence going to be? You know, are the cops aware that, you know, the people are kind of threatening to do this and that. And the local police were very aware of what was going on. And it's an area where it was on a Friday night. The cops were going to be around a little bit more. But you know what? We're going to risk it and we're going to go. And I did, and it was actually pretty pleasant. There were people that had their middle fingers up and wanted to yell about stuff. And my favorite thing was the same five trucks, I kid you not, same five trucks and cars would go around, speed really, really fast, rev their engines, blow smoke on us. Thank you for that. You know, it was, it was kind of scary. It was actually really scary because they would start going and speeding at the curve, at the curb, at the curb, same thing, because they both do that. And it was just, you know, people were standing there. It was a peaceful protest. We weren't doing anything bad and, you know, but they were like threatening and it was really, really scary. Like a couple of people in that area were disabled people. So, it, oh goodness gracious. I mean, you probably wouldn't really actually risk hurting someone, like wanting to hurt someone for, uh, actually, no, that's a lie. Some people do, but it was just scary to think about. And a couple of us crack joke, keep going at it. We're not paying for your gas bill, so I don't have to worry about that. But it was just like, really? You're spending all this time driving in a circle in the area just to rev smoke and your engines and speed and what not. Like, can you just go home. But what was really funny was one of the cars actually got pulled over the second or third time that they were coming around. And that was, that was kind of funny. Like, yeah, good job. Good job. Just speed really, really fast on a Friday night on the busiest intersection where there are lots and lots of people driving and also people standing around and a cop pulled them over and they got in trouble. And we just, we were very amused by that. Overall, a really decent protest, a really good first protest. Things went well. A lot of people came more than I expected to see come, so that was really nice. I would definitely do it again, and I follow the page now and just looking out to see what more they're doing, and I'd like to get involved with them in terms of, like, anything for disabled people, for deaf people, accessibility, so I'm gonna be on the lookout for that and trying to think of what can be done so I can maybe message them. I would like to see them definitely have interpreters for ASL, for Spanish, even Hmong. We have a very large Hmong population, so that would be nice. Anyways, protests are cool kids. If you can do them, if they are accessible to you, go join them. They're really nice. It makes you feel like you're really doing something. As does online activism, but I'm just saying, protests in general really make you feel like you're really doing something good for the world.
Let me know if you've been to any protests. Let me know how they went. What's it say? We'll definitely love to hear your stories or read your stories because I can't hear that very well. If you would like to help translate, <laughs> I make terrible jokes. If you would like to help translate this video, I very much appreciate it and I will leave a translation link down below in the description box. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video and I will see you later. Bye.